Okay. Uh, hopefully that fixed our audio problem. Um, so this is uh, Wes from Unicorn Riot. We're uh, live at the Chico Walmart uh, tent city uh, that had a scheduled evacuation today um, or a scheduled eviction today. Um, FEMA warned uh, local residents that um, they were going to evict the people in this tent city that's sort of organically established at the Walmart uh, here in Chico. Um, this is the only Walmart in town. Uh, Chico's about, I'd say, 15 miles from the town of Paradise that burned. And Paradise uh, was just one of several communities that burned. The town of uh, Concow also was had similar devastation, almost complete devastation. And um, yeah, so uh, a lot of people have um, sort of congregated here at this Walmart um, providing each other with aid and uh, various services and just posting up their tents. Um, there's people here with dogs and kids and um, this has sort of been an unfolding uh, situation here in Chico. Um, and a lot of people were surprised that uh, FEMA threatened to evict this camp because it's the only place for a lot of people to go. Got some helicopter movement there. Uh, anyway, wait for that audio to go down. Um, earlier here, before we fix the audio, uh, I was talking about this sign. Uh, these are just some of the things that were posted on this. This information board looks like someone just put it together real quick, but it's pretty nice actually. And. Uh, yeah, so there's a warning about norovirus. There's a norovirus uh, outbreak that happened a few days ago at several shelters. Um, so this is just a warning for people to take precautions. Um, there's also a flyer for the mutual aid disaster relief. Um, lots of folks have been doing uh, community outreach and organizing all sorts of meetings and um, uh, community community mutual aid um, surrounding the fire. There's also looks like a warning for N95 masks to prevent against permanent lung damage. Um, so yeah, a few other flyers. Um, kind of walk around a little and give y'all a better vantage point. Yeah, I mean, this is just a normal Walmart. I've actually been to this Walmart dozens of times before and never seen anything like this here. Like these are donations. Um, so this isn't the only place like this too. Um, I think a lot of people either can't get into the shelters or they don't want to stay there for whatever reasons. Um, and so people have been popping up in parking lots like this kind of throughout the area. I um, actually spent the night here last night just to kind of get a feel for what was going on. And yeah, there was this many people out pretty much at two in the morning. Um, So it looks like uh, someone set up a bunch of porta potties for folks. Um, yeah, I really don't know where everyone's going to go if FEMA does actually evict people today. Their schedule was for uh, one o'clock today. So it's, it's a little past 1 p.m. here in California. 
Um, we haven't seen anything from FEMA either way. I also did read something online mentioning that they were gonna try to relocate some people um, to different parts of the state and uh, other close by shelters and stuff. Um, and there was a rumor of buses, but I'm not seeing any buses. Um, but yeah, so just kind of walk around this Walmart parking lot, give you all an idea for just everything that's going on here. Over here, um, that area seemed like where a lot of people were camping out. Um, this area is more where aid stuff's happening. And so someone brought in a food truck. Looks like they're cooking meals for people. Um, just gonna walk through here. Sorry about the loud generator. Um, yeah, it's been really nice to see uh, how much people have been taking care of each other. I know a lot of volunteers have been putting in just hours and hours of work. Um, give you all an idea here from across the street. Get a shot of these signs here. Uh, looks like someone's offering showers and oh, it's the Chico Islamic Center is uh, offering showers and donation distribution. That's, so that's one thing going on. There's another information board. Um, a lot of this is uh, missing folks. So um, I don't wanna get too close to that just for people's privacy, but uh, yeah, there's still, uh, I believe 12 to 1300 people missing. That number's been rising a lot lately. And at first it was just 100 to 200 people for like the first whole week. And then uh, within the last couple of days, it shot up to 600 people verified missing. And now that number has since doubled. Um, and so I think just with all the chaos and confusion and different, uh, different data coming in that, uh, that there was a lot of, you know, miss, I don't know. I don't know how the government missed that many people, but um, other than to say that it's been incredibly chaotic here in Chico, California. Uh, I'm just going to bend down and tie my shoe real quick before I trip. All right, we're back. Uh, so again, this is Wes with Unicorn Riot. Um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit media organization. And um, yeah, we're doing several live streams today. Some of my colleagues are down in Tijuana, Mexico, uh, documenting the migrant caravan. Um, so we have those live streams up today too. Um, right now where we're at presently is uh, Chico, California. We're at the local Walmart, the only Walmart in Chico. Might even be the only Walmart in Butte County. Uh, there's probably one in Oroville, actually. But um, this is where a lot of people have ended up after the fire. Uh, over 10,000 homes were burned. Um, and that number is rising daily just as, as first responders and government folks get in there and identify exactly what happened. Um, so, yeah, you can see there's just like a lot of activity happening. Um, not just people uh, here to sleep, but people here to just come help out. Um, you know, people are uh, living out of their cars here, not just in the tents, uh, seeing 
pretty huge number of people just living in their cars here over the past few days. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna walk back into this. Yeah, this is definitely not a normal site for this Walmart. Uh, like I said earlier, I've been to this place a bunch of times living in this area and uh, never seen it like this. This is, um, what's going on though? see people are just living their everyday lives as best they can it's, I guess not everyday life this is just a lot of people have been displaced it's displaced um, and there really is nowhere for them to go uh, the community of Chica was already having a housing crisis before this happened um, and so there wasn't really many vacancies to begin with and uh, Tens of thousands of people are under these mandatory evacuations. And so some of them still might have homes, but they just can't get back to them. And so a lot of people are waiting, um, which is honestly kind of dangerous. The, the, it's, it's somewhat clear right now that the smoke sort of comes and goes, um, but it's been reported that the air out here is some of the worst, if not the worst in the, in the whole world here in Northern California. Um, highly hazardous uh, smoke because it wasn't just the wildfires burning, um, the sort of forest organic materials, but also lots of homes. I mean, thousands, thousands of homes, thousands of structures went up in flames. And so there's lots of uh, stuff, you know, plastics and sheetrock and chemicals and all sorts of things that burned. And that's just lingering in the air right now. I read a report yesterday of people in the Bay Area coughing up blood, and honestly, that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I know just the week I've been out here, there's been noticeable symptoms. I think that the real scale of this isn't gonna be known for a long time. I mean, there's still so many people missing, and um, you know, the, the effects are gonna be uh, really long-term. Um, and I don't think America really knows just like how bad this, this thing was. This is um, the most destructive and most deadly wildfire in California history. Um, and uh, those of us that have lived in California, we've just seen it get uh, uh, worse. It's escalatingly worse um, pretty much year by year. You know, there was really bad fires last year in Santa Rosa. And I never thought I'd see something worse than that, but this fire has definitely been more deadly and uh, caused a lot more widespread damage. Um, you know, uh, different people are sort of assessing the cause of the fire on different things. I think it's still yet to be officially determined. Um, lots of community members though are uh, are thinking that it was caused by PG&E because PG&E was distributing warnings just right before the fire that they were going to be working on power lines. There's a lot of other just like chatter online I probably won't get into, but um, PG&E uh, possibly might be responsible for starting the fire. Um, to, uh, you know, but there's there's other people saying different things. Donald Trump came to. Uh, paradise yesterday for his little photo op and um, said that it was that in other countries they rake the leaves or something like that and that prevents their forest fires I think that's personally I think that's just a um, inadequate explanation for what's going on you know uh, I think a lot of climate scientists and even firefighters are saying that they think it's 
has a lot to do with the changing climate condi conditions and changing climate situation. Um, other people are pointing towards like government mismanagement of the forests, you know, not doing control 